What's going on guys? Apathetic here with all your tips, recommendations, and everything in between. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step what is the best hunter build in 2020 pre-Beyond Light. So we're going to cover everything from the subclass to use, the weapon loadouts you should focus on depending on your playstyle, and stats you should be aiming for on your hunter. So whether you're just starting to play hunter or a hunter veteran looking to take your game to the next level, you're going to want to stick around. The last thing I'll add is the majority of this footage is captured during my streams on Twitch. So make sure you drop a follow using the link below if you want to see more gameplay like this live with that let's get into it our subclass will be running middle tree night stalker but before we get in depth into the perks of the subclass we need to cover the basics what i mean by this is making sure that we have the best option selected in our subclass tree for hunter and it all starts with our dodge now both hunter dodges have a good amount of utility but in my opinion what makes hunter such a strong class is its ability to be elusive and get in and out of engagements with ease knowing that we need to select the option that will only enhance those efforts and that's going to be gambler's dodge Dodge perform a deft tumble, avoiding enemy attacks. Dodging near enemies fully recharges your melee ability. Gambler's Dodge is probably one of the most frustrating abilities to play against in Destiny 2, and it's because it has many benefits and different ways it can impact your game, but I'll try to be concise in summing them all up. First, the benefit of either removing or lowering by a great amount the aim assist someone has on you when you dodge. Dodging when a player is aiming at you in any capacity can make it very hard to track a player because that sticky feeling they have when tracking you is suddenly gone, and then it becomes easy to over or under aim at your target. This is particularly useful against snipers like revoker with incredibly high aim assist as it immediately increases the difficulty of use next gambler's dodge allows us to get out situations that any other class would simply die in an example of this is you slide around a corner and the players you were trying to engage are much farther away than you anticipated as a hunter you can simply dodge back around that corner and boom you're out of that situation whereas titan and warlock yes even top tree Dawnblade, most likely die in that situation because they wouldn't be able to change directions fast enough this allows hunters to take a lot more risks since with their dodge, they can instantly change directions to get out of a bad situation. But this goes beyond just being a defensive ability. It can be used offensively. As a hunter, you can run up to two opponents, shotgun one enemy, dodge backwards, and then jump to quickly create space between the other opponent while taking shots at them in the air. The last benefit, which is often overlooked, is the fact that this dodge also fully recharges our melee. This is especially useful if shotgunning a hunter, as it's common to shoot your weapon, then dodge, which would give us our smoke back, then move into the next engagement with another tool in our arsenal and also reduces the need to invest in our strength stat. Moving on to our grenade, and for me, it comes down to two options. You can either take the more tactical approach and choose a spike grenade, which has a skill gap to it, but in the right hands is very potent, and you have the void wall grenade. Both grenades offer great area control, but personally, I go with the void wall grenade because of the higher damage output, how the grenade disperses, and the fact that I prefer to use the wombo combo, but more on that later. Getting into our jump, and for Hunter, our jump can be our greatest strength and our greatest weakness. That's why the jump we select is actually more crucial than it may seem. Now in the past, I used to think triple jump was the way to go, but after experimenting more, the jump I recommend for Hunter and PvP is the strafe jump, which gives a second jump with strong directional control. The reason I chose strafe jump is because it's going to automatically keep us from jumping too much in the case of triple jump, but still gives a good amount of height and air time in a single jump, which also allows us time to take in air shots at our opponents. It's also great because it gives the ability to slow our momentum mid jump and throw our enemies off who may be tracking us. This alone makes strafe jump the best option when it comes to making our hunter movement as unpredictable as possible. Getting into our subclass of choice is the best subclass for hunter and it's going to be middle tree night stalker. This subclass has gone through a little bit of change since its inception but even through all that it's still the top competitive subclass for hunter and all starts with the super spectral blades. Summon a pair of deadly void blades and stalk the battlefield in a veil of shadows. Spectral blades is an amazing super and one thing that really separates it from other supers in the game is the fact that when popping spectral blades you become invisible and gain true sight which is essentially wall hacks. This grants two huge benefits. First, when you pop your super, you can now clearly see where your enemy is and decide what the best method of attack is and reduce the chance of you getting team shot by the enemy team. Secondly, the invisibility that's granted increases the amount of damage resistance in super, but also allows us to get the jump on the enemy team, and on a close range super like Spectral Blades, that is huge. The ability to close the gap on the enemy team while using minimal super energy and having higher damage resistance is a game changer. Getting into the attacks on Spectral Blades, we have a light and heavy attack which both have benefits to them and a good amount of utility. Starting with the light attack on Spectral Blades, this is best used when you have multiple enemies in front of you, and with multiple swings you can dash between targets taking multiple down in quick 
succession. Another way the light attack can be used is kind of like sword skating. You could do a quick jump then immediately swipe to give yourself a nice boost. This can be used to run away in a scenario where our health is low or be used to chase down opponents trying to get away from you. I'll add that this ability to skate in Spectral Blades makes it one of the hardest supers to escape from even on your fastest subclasses like Top Tree Dawn. Now the heavy attack is probably one of the most powerful super attacks in Destiny 2. For one, it has a huge hitbox and in some cases can kill two enemies at a time if they are close enough, but where it really comes in handy is against supers. The huge hitbox makes landing the heavy attack super easy and it does a ton of damage in one fell swoop and there are only a couple of supers that can either create the sub base or reflect the damage needed to win. Spectral Blades is a very balanced all round super that's great for tracking down enemies, winning super duels, and having a ton of information heading into a fight. Next up in our subclass tree, we have Corrosive Smoke. Throw a smoke bomb from a distance with this melee ability. The smoke bomb slows enemies and damages them over time. The smoke ability has to be one of my favorite things about this subclass, and that's because of its many uses. Starting with the obvious, which I alluded to earlier, and that's the wombo combo. What this is, is when you throw your smoke and immediately throw your grenade right after. The smoke slows your enemy's movements, which causes them to be slow or get stuck completely in your grenade, doing a ton of damage and usually killing them. Now the smoke alone is great at locking down different points of the map, but when you combine that with a grenade, it now becomes an even more lethal combination that can be used in multiple scenarios. Especially in modes like Trials when you have a body down, you're able to bait the res, then as the enemy gets closer, you can blast them with the wombo combo, in most cases killing them. Beyond the wombo combo though, the use cases I mentioned still work with only the smoke, but it becomes much more of a primer effect. What I mean by that is you can use the smoke to prime your opponents to be attacked. I specifically find it very useful when I'm weak and an enemy is pushing me. I'll throw a smoke, doing some damage, obscuring their vision, and slowing them down, allowing me enough time to get a little health back, then get the jump on them in their weakened state. Corrosive smoke reminds me in a sense of a pulse grenade, but with less damage. It can be used on heavy ammo, tighten barricades to block off corridors. It offers a lot of utility in terms of how it can help you control an area or zone. This ability truly is the king of utility, and the fact that it can either be comboed with a grenade for increased lethality, or used standalone to lock down areas, really shows how underrated corrosive smoke is. Talking about our next two abilities, and we're going to combine them here since you really can't talk about one without talking about the other, and that's Flawless Execution. While crouched, precision kills grant invisibility, true sight, or wall hacks, and increase melee range and shattering strike. After performing a Flawless Execution, your melee attack weakens enemies. Starting with Flawless Execution, this ability's main benefit is the temporary wall hacks you get for 3 seconds, which I'll admit is not a very long time, but is more than enough time to gather some additional information on the whereabouts of your enemies around you and prepare your next move. The fact that you also gain invisibility is nice, since if you head to a fight immediately after, it can cause you to get the jump on your enemies since you won't be on their radar. I found Flawless Execution to be especially beneficial for those that like to crouch randomly while they are strafing gunfights since you will be more likely to proc the ability. As for Shattering Strike guys, I'll be honest, I don't really ever notice this ability. It requires too many things to line up perfectly in order for it to be used frequently, and it's the only real downside of this subclass, but honestly, we're not choosing Middle Tree Night Sucker for Flawless Execution or Shattering Strike. We are choosing it for the super and the amazing zone control offers from the smoke ability. Those two abilities alone are so strong and potent that it's not the end of the world if we have two just okay abilities in this subclass. Tree. Moving on to weapon loadouts that pair best with this subclass, I'm going to separate this into two parts. One part for my friends on PC, and one part for my friends on console. For my friends on PC, the hand cannon snipe combo is extremely potent on Hunter, since with the dodge, this can allow you to escape situations easily and be very elusive. Not to mention the ability to jump into the air to support your teammates with your hand cannon. I'll also add you're going to want Icarus mod on any weapon you use on Hunter to make sure our in-air accuracy is as strong as possible. In terms of weapons, I recommend any 150 RPM hand cannon and snipers like Beloved, Revoker, and Eye of Soul if you're looking for an option that will last you in in-game activities. For console, I still recommend sniping, but your primary 600 RPM autos are going to be the great option here, so weapons like Gnawing Hunger, Serious Regime, and Summoner will be pretty hard to compete with. But if you love hand cannons, I also hear that Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten are viable hand cannon options on console, as well as the last word if you're looking for a more exotic option. Now this is the first time I haven't really mentioned shotguns, and don't get me wrong, hunters are great for shotgunning, especially when you factor in the amount of misdirection hunters can create. That being said, I personally believe hunters are one of the best classes for sniping, and with middle tree night stalker specifically, you have a lot of options to lock areas down and protect yourself while sniping. The other thing to consider is that with this subclass and shotgunning, you often end up wasting your smoke a lot since it's attached to your melee. 
So if you go for the shotgun melee and the shoddy one hits your enemy, you can end up wasting your smoke, which is not ideal. But as always, choose the loadout you play best with. And with Hunter, the nice thing is, is basically any loadout is viable because of the overall movement capabilities. Next up, we have armor and stats for Hunter. And our focus is going to be slightly different compared to other classes. And I'll also mention I'm still grinding for decent stat armor, so don't judge me. In terms of overall armor we're looking for, a good rule of thumb is making sure we're looking for armor that is rolling 60 or higher. This allows us to focus on the stats we are chasing while getting our other stats as high as possible, ensuring all our cooldowns can be as low as possible. Possible. In terms of stats you should focus on for Hunter, it's going to be recovery and mobility with intellect as a close third. Getting tier 10 recovery is a first on the list and allows us to recover as quickly as possible from our engagements and minimize the amount of downtime or time we need to take to recover from fights. It can also be the difference between us winning and losing a fight since we can get our help back quicker than our enemy that gives us the upper hand. Next up is mobility which is going to decrease the cooldown of our dodge which is incredibly valuable in how it impacts our survivability. With tier 10 mobility on Hunter, this allows us to have our dodge every 10 seconds which is just crazy. This basically ensures that anytime we enter an engagement, we are going to have our dodge. The other thing that's awesome is we don't need perfectly rolled armor to influence the mobility stats. As demonstrated by Drewski in his video on hidden mobility buffs for hunters, which I'll link below, there are mods, exotic armor, and weapons that all give visible and invisible boost to mobility, which makes creating a perfect build even easier. Not to mention mods like powerful friends for your class item, which basically give a free two tiers of mobility. But again, if you're looking for a more technical breakdown of these invisible buffs, make sure to check out Drewski's video, again, link down below. From there, once we've gotten tier 10 recovery and as close to tier 10 mobility as possible, the rest we want to try to focus into intellect. This allows us to shorten how long it takes for us to get Spectral Blades, and being the first team to get your super can give you a lot of power in terms of how we influence the flow of a match. In terms of other mods we should be running, you want to make sure you're running your Enhanced Blank for whatever weapon you are using. So if you're sniping, ensuring you're using Enhanced Sniper Targeting, Handsome Flinching Sniper, Sniper Scavenger, etc. All this will help make sure your armor is optimized for the weapon loadout you are running. Lastly, we have exotics and for Hunter, it's a little difficult to choose because of the fact that the Hunter has so many exotics that are universal and powerful. In terms of exotics, I would recommend for Hunter, you have Stompies, of course, Wormhusk Crown and Dragon Shadow. Personally, I always prefer movement exotics, so Stompies would be my personal choice, but especially because I shotgun. Having increased sprint speed and slide distance ensures I'm always going to be one of the first to a point on the map and improves my ability to win shotgun duels because of the improved slide. Overall, Stompies really gives me a nice combination of being able to escape fights or close gaps on opponents very quickly. That being said, Wormhusk is also crazy powerful in modes like Survival and Trials of Osiris, where staying alive is of the utmost importance, and for slowing down the damage a good thorn shot can do. Dragon Shadow has been getting a lot more attention lately, and especially for sniper mains, I could see this exotic being the go-to choice since it allows you to reload all your weapons and gives you a huge invisible boost to your mobility when you dodge. Ultimately, just like your weapon loadout, use the exotic you feel best matches your style of play and allows you to slay out on Hunter. And if you're looking to also perfect your loadouts on Warlock and Titan, make sure you check out the two videos here to make sure you can get your character dialed in and take your gameplay to the next level. As always, if you enjoyed, make sure you like, share, and subscribe as it's a free way to support me, and I will catch you guys in the next one.